Last week I had a discussion with David, a friend of mine from the Power BI community, about the magical include in report refresh button in Power Query. This one. The topic was how to use this feature or more importantly, what the expected result is when we exclude a query from report refresh. And we have discovered that sometimes excluding a query from report refresh produces exactly what one would expect from such a feature. However, in some other cases, it might not provide exactly what you are after. So in today's episode, I would like to show you two scenarios that we use to get a better understanding about how this including report refresh button works in Power Query and Power BI. Let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe button so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. The dummy data we use today is super simple. There are two Excel sheets, one has numbers from 1 to 5 and the other one has a cell called a multiplier. You guessed it right, this multiplier will be the query that we are going to exclude from refresh. With that said, it's time to head over to Power Query. Here we are in Power Query and as you can see here, Sheet 1 Query is the numbers from 1 to 5 and Sheet 2 Query is the multiplier that is currently 2. Let's load this data quickly to Power BI. On the first page, I'm going to check in a matrix visual, add my numbers from Sheet 1 and create a measure called Test. Once this is done, I also add the measure to the matrix. And as I don't want to switch between the report canvas and the data view, I'll add the card with the multiplier value as well. So far it's not rocket science, right? Imagine having something like unit price or discount percent by product in a different query that you would bring over when it comes to business reporting. You would do that by utilizing the relationship between the tables, but for this example, I just wanted to create something super quick and easy to follow. The first scenario that we are going to cover now is where I reckon the including report refresh button does what we would expect from it. Back to Power Query. Let's untick this line. Head back to our Excel file and change the multiplier from number 2 to 3. That's done. So back to Power Query. But before we click on close and apply, let's just refresh the preview of sheet 2. Great, so Power Query sees the updated multiplier, this is why we now have 3 instead of 2. Time to head back to the report by clicking on close and apply. Well, it looks like nothing happened. Which is great, right? As I mentioned before, this is where we report developers want to or need to exclude any changes from one data source. There might be some business logic behind this step or just simply, we do not expect any changes in the data. If we exclude a query from report refresh, it does have an impact on how quickly a refresh will go through. So I would strongly advise anyone who has relatively static data to turn it off. You can always switch it back on and refresh the data ad hoc. But I digress. Here comes the second example and in a sense the multiplication will happen one step higher up in the chain. Let's revisit what the button says. It says include in report refresh. So how would you define where the report refresh process start. You see, this is where David and I had a bit of a head scratching. I'm going to duplicate my sheet one query and add PQ to the end. This time, instead of multiplying my numbers in DAX, I use a list.sum function in M to multiply these numbers with the multiplier. As the current value for the multiplier is now 3, I'm happy with the numbers I can find in the multiplied column. Let's load the data. On the second report page, I just add all of these to a matrix. Good stuff, right? Now back to Excel and update number 3 to number 4. Essentially, I'm just increasing the multiplier. Now back to Power Query and Sheet 2 Query. Refresh the preview. Good. Power Query picked up the updated number, again, just as we would expect. And if I head over to Sheet 1 PQ Query, these numbers are also updated. 
Well, this is a bit scary, as we are going to load this table with the updated figures into our model, right? Let's see. Click close and apply. And surprise, surprise! Have a look at our matrix. Our original query or default numbers are now multiplied by 4 instead of 3. Is it good? Would you expect this in Power Query and in the report itself? I mean, the button says include in report refresh. I can tell you honestly, I wasn't expecting that. Maybe because I have never tried anything like this before. In a business report, I would assume having pricing data or discount percent would be part of the product or customer table and not just sitting outside of the model. But it's great that we have uncovered this hidden gem with David, as it means that now we have two different use cases for the including refresh button in Power Query. I guess finding a use case for the first scenario is simple. Either we need a hard-coded value or we have a slow data source that we do not want to refresh is when we could easily use this feature. For the second scenario, I would say that a slow data source is still a valid reason to exclude from refresh, but I believe that when someone would use such a setup, disabling the load of the query is also a must. But hey, what do you think? Have you used this feature before? Were you aware of the two quite distinct behaviors? Let me know all of this in the comments below, and if you have any other examples where you excluded the query from the report refresh, please share them as well so others can learn about those too. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.